thanks for coming and joining us at the assembly in George Square Gardens. It was very nice. It was, I got up quite early this morning and it was uh, the sun was shining. Oh. I'm good. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm going. Um, I was going to go swimming in the sea this afternoon. I'm not going to do it anymore. That's really uh, brave. It's not brave. I mean, it's lovely. Yeah. It's great. It's a bit. Um, it's just unusual. Yeah. But it's nice. And so, and it's the fifth year for you here. Yeah. It's my. Well, it's my fifth solo show. It's my tenth or eleventh fringe. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about your show. You're taking place in the Pleasant Dome. Yes. At what time? It's at seven p.m. It's at the Queen Dome. It's called The Future Is Another Place. And um, okay. it's fine, like it's fine. There's nothing else wrong doing with a PR it. For you. <laughs> no, it's good. I think it's, I don't know. I'm sure I've done it's one. Brilliant. I did yeah. one, and it wasn't the best one. But nobody will see that one because yeah. it's already happened. It's okay, in the past. Great. The future great. is another place. Future is no, another place. I think it's quite fun. I like it. But and it's so about politics. The, is it a positive idea that the future's in another place? So we can forget that right now isn't. Is it awful? Great in politics. I, it's sort of a little bit. Like, I guess the upshot of it is like the future is a place that we do have some control over. Okay. But a lot of it is just me being like, I'm so furious all the time. <laughs> um, it's, it's like a stress ball for you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been very cathartic so far. It's been good. Okay, okay. People have to sit and listen. Yeah. They can't leave. Good. Or yeah. they do, but Captive no. Captive audience. <laughs> exactly. It's, just, it's like cheaper than therapy. Yeah. Perfect. In terms of like the hours. You play yourself down, but you've had, I mean, was it your first year you got the Perrier nomination for Best and I Newcomer? I won the Newcomer yeah. one the first year, yeah, yeah and I've done, this is my fifth one. That's pretty amazing for your first year of it, and then... Oh, thank you. You've, you've had numerous awards. Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I think, was it at 17 or 19 you got... Um, oh, 17, yeah. Yeah. I got your first, was it the... If, and no, that was the BBC okay. Comedy Awards, which yeah. is in the George Square Theatre over there. Brilliant. And it was like, the like, George Square Theatre is about 800 people. And um, I was 17. At 17. Yeah, and I'd done like 15 gigs, so I just was completely terrified. And I didn't eat for three days beforehand. So, you so I was just so right. afraid. Exactly. I mean, I'd, I've never looked better. But I, uh, yeah, it was funny. And it was a really odd night because that year they made it like really high profile. And it was on mm -hmm. BBC One. And they had Bob Monkhouse presenting oh, it. Okay. And um, uh, they had like celebrity judges, all this weird stuff. Bob Monkhouse was really nice yeah. um, and sort of rescued me because after I'd been on, I was 17 um, yeah. and they'd got loads of free booze. And for <laughs> me especially, because I was the only girl yeah. and woman in the final, they got me like a crate of reef or something awful that teenagers <laughs> love. And I was like, well, I'm not going to win, yeah. so I might as well enjoy myself. I'm 17. And I started drinking these reefs. So you and drank the crate of reefs? I drank a lot of it. And the things I'm not a drinker, like, really at all, uh, in general, at yeah. all. And um, uh, Bob Bunk has saw that I was getting really pissed and was like, listen, you might have to go back out there because you might win. And I was thinking, I'm not going to win, Bob. You're an old man. You don't know what you're talking about. And then he took me backstage and just made me eat all of his fruit plate that he got for free. He was like, eat this. He's sober up. It's really nice. Oh, I love it. very sweet. I, I would never drink reef at all is a good lesson yeah. to start off with. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you're young. And how did you get into stand-up in the first place? I mean, at 17 to... Well, I did it sort of as a teenager. There was yeah. a, an arts centre near me, and they, they had, like, a comedy writing workshop thing. Okay. And I went on that. And um, it was great. It was, like, me, yeah. loads of sort of women whose children had just left home okay. and awkward men in their 30s. So it was great, nice. you know, like a 14-year-old... <laughs> 35 year old men doing like really frightened one liners. Made lots of friends. Yeah, I, I did. I, I actually did. I'm still friends with some of them now, like 14 years later. Wow. And do you find that coming Five back to years the festival? Later. I guess coming back to the festival, there must be so many friends and yes. places you know. You, have you got loads of shows you're planning to go and see? Yeah, I've got well loads. Do you want my yeah? hot picks? Yeah. I've got like the hot bits. Um, Claudia Doherty okay. uh, is doing a show at the Gilded Balloon and okay. it's called What is Soil Erosion? And she's a really unusual, like quite avant-garde <laughs> performer. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. Um, uh, James A. Caster, who supported mm -hmm. me on tour last year, okay. he's doing his first hour-long show of stand-up. It is wonderful. Okay. He's so gifted. You'll be watching him thinking, oh, he's going to be super famous. And he is. Mm -hmm. Izzy Sooty, she's uh, oh, yeah, my she's best friend so in the world. She's okay. the best human being alive. And she's doing a show... Um, called Pearl and Dave. It's like okay, beautiful brilliant. songs about love and um, what else? Oh, there's a show in the Free Fringe called The Best of Boyd and Metcalf uh -huh. and it's two quite experimental comedians yeah. but who are both just incredibly lovable yeah. and really great. Oh, great. Okay, Free I Fringe always great. Exactly. <laughs> but there's loads more. Yeah. 
Sarah Pascoe, Jess Foster Q, uh, Hattie Ashdown, Leila Boris. This is four we don't more need for you. to read the list or anything, we can just listen <laughs> just to, come to me, yeah. Just coming back to the fringe as well, because you've been doing tours and all sorts. Yeah, it's really nice. And it is nice that like all your friends are around you, so yeah. normally you can't see your best mates who are stand ups every day because they're in Leeds yeah. and you're in Manchester. Oh, that would be quite near. They're in Leeds <laughs> and you're in like Devon. Yeah. And so it's really be like brilliant to ring yeah. them up. And also, I live with four friends who are also comedians oh, yeah. and so we like have nice breakfast and nice chats nice. And, and normally I'm living on my own at the moment now yeah. so it's a lot more fun. Oh, okay. to get so up it's and like, like going back to student in all yes, it really your is. best friends in the same flat. Yeah, oh, except better because everyone studies the same subject. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have early lectures or anything. No, so. not that. <laughs> oh brilliant. Okay, well that sounds amazing. Thank and you. Um, I think it'll be fun. Do you feel there's more pressure now when you're writing your shows or is it more that you can come and relax because it's... People already find you funny. Oh God, I wish. <laughs> you never feel like you could ever re like rest yeah. on anything. She always feel like, Ugh. but I also think, I don't know. There is more pressure because I'm not. I don't read reviews of it, yeah. and I don't care what people yeah. say about it in terms of like critical stuff. But I do really care that people enjoy it, yeah. and I really love the fact that I do my tours and I do my yeah. shows, and people have started yeah. coming, and so I really want that to keep happening. So. That's really hard, but then at the same time, you can only write what you can write, yeah. and you can only do as well as you can under the circumstances. Yeah. So I just feel like, oh god, I've tried my hardest. If this isn't good enough, I am sorry. Well, and that's it's how going I always well feel. So far, isn't it? I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. When you're writing your material, I mean, how much of it is just you thinking, this is what I want to talk about, like yeah. politics this time, or, or do you have to be like, well, what's the audience? No, most you always do what you want to talk it. about yeah. because otherwise. You're not. You have to be fully committed yeah. to it, and I think that's the only way that the audience really will come inside properly and invest in it is if they know yeah. you're giving a bit of yourself and you really mean it. You really mean it, because I actually think you know. I mean, it's. I don't know. I think some people might write shows that are more like ah, oh, people like this. I'll write that, yeah, and yeah. and and I don't think people wouldn't like it. But I think for me, the only thing I feel like I can do is like write about what I care about in a really boring way <laughs> but like that's but all I can do people will remember it more you oh know, god I might, hope so yeah, that'd be my dream if you're writing about what you enjoy and if you're enjoying it they'll enjoy it I hope so right. yeah I think so and I, I, um, I do really love it and when it's going well up here it's like yeah. literally nowhere else it's just it's just so fantastic yeah.